Dogs of Auckland, with images by Max Gimlet. Curious coming here again, where I hadn't known where I was ever. Following lead of provident strangers around the corners, out to the edges. Never really looking back, but kept adamant forward disposition. A Christian self-evident resolve. Small balloons of purpose across the wide ocean. Friends, relations, all left behind. Each day the sun rose, then set. It must be the way life is, like they say. A story someone might have told me. I'd have listened. Like the story Murray recalled by Janet Frame, in which a person thinks to determine what's most necessary to life and strips away legs, arms, trunk, to be left with a head, more specifically a brain, puts it on the table, and a cleaning woman comes in, sees the mess, and throws it into the dustbin. Don't think of it, just remember. Just then there was a gorgeous light on the street there where I was standing, waiting for the 005 bus at the end of Queen Street, just there on Customs West. Dazzling sun through rain. George is gorgeous, George is. So it begins. Almost 20 years ago, I fled my apparent life, went off into the vast Pacific, though it was only miles and miles in a plane. Came down an Auckland airport, was met by Russell Haley. He's still here with Jean, though they've moved to the East Coast a few hours away. And Alan Loney is here, as ever, my friend. And Whiston, whose light I might see there across the bay, blinking. And Alistair Patterson is here, with a 34-foot boat up the harbour, as in comes the crew of Black Magic with the America's Cup in their yellow slickers, the cars moving down Queen Street, the crowd there waiting, some half million in the same dazzling light. I see tiny, seemingly dancing figures at the roof's edge of the large building back of the square looking down. How to stay real in such echoes? How be finally anywhere the body's got to? You were with friends, sir. Do you know their address? I walk so fast through Albert Park. Is it my heart causes these awkward, gasping convulsions? I can mask the grimace with a smile. Can match the grimace with a smile. I can. I, I think I can. Flooded with fat, unyielding sun, the winter beds of small plants form a pattern. If one looks, a design. There is Queen Victoria still, and not far from her, the statue of a man. Sit down. Sit down. The pen. Scales intimate. From the frame and panes of fresh white painted windows in the door to the deck, second floor with its white posts and securing lattice of bars, but nothing, nothing that would ever look like that. Just the small porch below's the garden, winter sodden, trampoline, dark wet green pad pulled tight, a lemon tree thick with fruit, and fences, backyards, neighbours surrounding in all the sloping, flattened valley with trees stuck in like a kid's picture, palms, Norfolk pine, stubby ones I can't name, a, a church spire, brownish, of red at the edge of the far hill, also another prominent bald small dome, both of which catch the late sun and glow there near the head of Ponsonby Road. The yellow bus stops up the street where Wharf comes into Jervois Road off Buller to Bayfield, where I am. I am writing this sitting at the table and love you more and more. When you hadn't yet got here, I set to each morning to learn New Zealand. I, I thought as if it were a book simply. I listened to everyone. Now we go to bed, as all, first Will and Hannah in this rented house, then us, lie side by side reading. 
then off with the light and to sleep, to slide close up to one another. Sometimes your bottom tucked tight against my belly or mine lodged snug in your lap. Sweet dreams, dear heart, till morning comes. Back again, still new from the south where it's cold now and people didn't seem to know what to do. Cars sliding, roads blocked with snow. Walk along here through the freshening morning down the wet street past green plastic garbage bins, past persistent small flowering bushes, trees. Like the newcomer come to town, the dogs bark and one on the porch across from the house where we live makes a fuss when I turn to go in through the gate. Its young, slight mistress comes out as if in a dream, scolds the sad dog, cuffing it with shadowy hands and goes back in. I wonder where sounds go after they've been, where the light once here is now, what, like the joke, is bigger than life and blue all over or brown all over, here where I am. How big my feet seem, how curiously solid my body. Turning in bed at night with you gone, alone here, looking out at the greyish dark, I wonder who else is alive. Now our bus lumbers up on the hill from the stop at the foot of Queen Street. Another late rain, a thick sky, past the labouring traffic when just across at the intersection there's another bus going by. It's Windows papered with dogs, pictures of dogs, all sizes, kinds and colours, looking real patient like passengers who must be behind, sitting down in the seats. Stupid to ask what things mean if it's only to doubt them. That was a bus going elsewhere? Ask them. Raining again. Moments ago, the sky was a grey lapping pattern towards the light at the edges still over Auckland at the horizon. It's closed in except for the outline of a darker, small cloud with pleasant, almost lattice-like design laid over the lighter sky. Things to do today. Think of Ted Berrigan, friends absent or dead. Someone was saying, you don't really know where you are till you move away. How is it far if you think it? I still have the sense I've got this body to take care of, a thing someone left me in mind, as it were. Don't forget it. The dogs were there when I went up to the head of the street to shop for something to eat, and a lady, unaggressively but particular to get there, pushes in to pay for some small items she's got, saying she wants to get back to her house before the rain. The sky is pitch black towards the creek. She's there as I pass with my packages. She's stopped to peer into some lot, has a board enclosure around it. And there are two dogs playing, bouncing up each other. Should I bounce then in friendship against this inquisitive lady? Bark, be playful? One has no real words for that. Pointless otherwise to say anything she was so absorbed. I can't call across it, see it as a piece, I'm dulled with its reflective prospect, want all of it but can't get it, even a little piece here, hence the dogs, the dogs of Auckland, who were there first walking along with their company, seem specific to given streets, led the way, accustomed. Nothing to do with sheep or herding, no presence other than one uncannily human. A scale kept the city particular and usefully in proportion. When I was a kid, I remember lifting my foot up carefully so as to step over the castle wheel built with blocks. The world here is so similar, the sky so vast, so endless the surrounding ocean, no one could swim it. It's a basic company we've come to. They say people get to look like their dogs. And if I could, I'd have been Maggie. Thin, long nose, yellowish orange hair, a frenetic mongrel's terrier's delight in keeping it going, eager, vulnerable, but she's gone. 
All the familiar stories of the old man and his constant companion, the dog Bowser. My pride that Norman Mailer lists Bob, son of battle, as a book he valued in youth, as I had also. Warm, small, proud, lonely world. Coming first into this house from seemingly nowhere, a large, brown, amiable dog went bouncing in up the steps in front of us, plunged through the various rooms and out. Farther up the street, one less secure, misshapen, a bit thin-haired where it's worn, twists on his legs, quite small. This afternoon I thought he'd come out to greet me, coming home. He was at the curb as I came down and was headed toward me. Then he got spooked and barked, running, tail down for his house. I could hear all the others, back of the doors, howling, sounding the painful alarm. Empty, vacant, not the outside, but in. What you thought was a place you determined by talk and turning, neither dogs nor people were there. Pack up the backdrop, pull down the staging, not the dogs, but the dog of Auckland. Shan Duckland Senwa! I am the one with the missing head in the gully. Wilson walking up the tidal bed. I am the one in the story the friend told of his newfoundland, hit by the car at Auckland City intersection, crossing on the crossbow, knocked down first and run over the driver anxious for repairs to his car. I am the dog. Open the sky, let the light back in. Your ridiculous, pinched faces confound me. Your meaty privilege, lack of distinguishing measure, skill, your terrifying, mawkish dependence. You thought for even one moment it was your world. Anubis kills! Anubis rhymes with Auckland says the thoughtful humanist. At least an ah begins each word, and from there on it's only a matter of miles. By now I have certainly noticed that the dogs aren't necessarily with the people at all, nor are the people with the dogs. It's the light, backlit buildings, the huge sense of floating, platforms of glass like the face of the one at the edge of Elbert Park reflects back the trees for that charmed moment all in air. That's where we are. So how did the dogs get up here, eh? I didn't even bring myself, much less them. In the South Island, a bull terrier is minding sheep with characteristic pancake flat smile. Meantime, thanks, even now, much too late, to all who move about down on all fours in furry, various coats. Yours was the kind accommodation, the unobtrusive company, or else the simple valediction of a look. Oh.